Welcome to the 16 Ounce Cinema Podcast. Hello and welcome to 16 Ounce Cinema, where we drink pints and talk pictures. I'm TJ. I'm here with Angus. Oh, you introduced me first this time. I actually forgot which order was right and which was wrong, so I just said the first name. (laughs) He starts with A, so that makes complete sense. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's Michael talking. Hey, I like to be called brown sugar from now on. Thank you. Oh, Oh, you're you're taking the name (laughs) game from me, because I had nothing for this one. All right, Uh, nicknames. Uh, I've totally given up on nicknames because I'm not creative (laughs) or funny. Uh, but that's why you guys are on the show. <laughs> and this is our episode 40. Oh my god, 10 uh, more and I get to have a tattoo. Oh, that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Are you really going to do that? Dude, I'll get Sweet. one with you. Like, I would have got it after episode nah, one. Yeah, I, I like, wanted I to make sure fuck. we were doing it. <laughs> I think 50 is such a reasonable remember number. It's, remember, it's 16 OZ, not 160Z. Oh, I'm going to send it to you guys 1,700 times before it's appropriate. So, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just jump right into what we're drinking. Angus, it's your night for going first. I assume you're drinking cores out of a paint bucket. I <laughs> am <laughs> not. I ha- I honestly, I had to throw that shit out. Fuck, I'm trying to pop oh, this Oh, really? Thing yeah, That's I had like... Um, I had... E- even... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> Even though you were cutting it with like not nasty beer, yeah, it was still too bad, dude. Like it was, it just it tasted like rot. Oh, <laughs> do a, a quick recap this for anyone just joining and who didn't hear last episode. <laughs> so I I bought a keg that didn't fit in my kegerator. And they wouldn't take it back, so I just started filling up fucking gallon, like empty water gallons with beer, and I've kept it in my fridge for weeks, drinking out of gallons, like just sitting on my couch in my underwear, drinking out of them. Like I a didn't think it'd be funny, as funny right. the second time, but it's still fucking funny. Right, right, it's still great. <laughs> And yeah, like it got to the point where podcasting in your underwear, drinking cores out of milk jugs. It it was so fucking disgusting. After like, dude, fucking, (laughs) I'd less than a week. It was already gross as shit. And like, like, if you had like a growler, would it have been better or no? I I don't know. Like, cause it already Same came out. Same problem in a growler. Oh yeah, cause Cause they like goes flat. Oxidize them or something, right? I don't know chemistry. It it goes flat. Yeah, it tastes bad. Yeah. Yeah. So even a growler, you've got to drink within a couple days. Yeah, but I mean, growlers. I always wanted to do that. that. I've never done that. I've never owned the growler. Yeah, I I did too. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to drink. Like, I guess (laughs) I could if it was like. Yeah, next time we do something at your house, we should. We should. Yeah, if somebody comes by or something, we should. We should do a growler or something just just to say we fucking did it. My coworkers. Most of the growlers like 32 ounces, so it's not that much. Dude, I would would finish that in a day. Yeah. I was going to say, that's the next nothing. time we watch a movie on Amazon Prime, we can just have a growler. You just have a couple growlers, yeah. A couple Dude, growlers, and, goddamn. Me and Mike had 40s. Oh, one each. oh okay, yeah. Remember that? Okay. Like, we yeah, were doing like 40s 40, and shit, so. Something from a brewery. Yeah. Right. So, what are you drinking, Angus? Oh, um, I'm drinking Coors, but I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> not the bad you're course. cutting it with something else no no I, I've got that as my regular I've already had five um alright so what I got besides regular drinking my normal beer can cores that I've already had five of I'm drinking something called four firemen's blonde and that's all it says but I'm it's I guess a blonde ale um the reason I got it is because there's a weird story. Like, my ex-wife told me about how, like, every single person in her family, like, fucking cheated on their person with a fucking fireman. (laughs) So... So, so are you just going to bring beers that are, like, spiteful to your ex now? No, no, no. Are are you watching, like, home videos from the 80s of your family? Like, what the fuck? I'm just fucking sitting here depressed. No. um, Oh, now I'm sad now. (laughs) So, yeah, like, I was always worried about, like, a fireman, but it turns out it was a fucking, a fucking ex-heroin junkie fucking lesbian that would fucking take her away and not a fucking nice built fireman. 
Okay. So, <laughs> hey, so and Dude. anyways, let let me finish. This right. does have something to do with my movie. All right. All right. Let me just get that out there so I just don't sound like a bitter fucking prick. Yeah, man. That's something to do with your movie. We got it. Um, I also drank a beer, and it's called uh. To it's spite like, a woman. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> Laguna Tees Brewing Company. Like oh, Laguna uh, Lagunitas. Yeah, Thank you. Lagunitas. That's how yeah. you would say it on this planet. No, it's called uh, Brown Sugar, which is my name for this episode. And okay. I chose it because okay, BS. I, needed, I, I needed something brown for all the fucking lily white bullshit throughout my entire film. It's the whitest okay. film I've ever seen in my life. So, all right. so I'm the brown sugar. <laughs> Since Angus overshared, I don't mind telling you oh, why geez, I'm drinking. I'm, I'm out. Bubbly <laughs> blackberry sparkling water. What? Because I've just been too depressed. I'm trying not to drink because it's making it like really bad the next day. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh <my laughs> how is your the episode? How, how is yours so more was, depressing than mine? So no, beginning of you, a big, no, that's what I'm saying. You way overshared, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm feeling down. So I'm trying not to be, drink. Beginning of uh, season three, we're we're done because I'm the only one that's going to be left standing alive before the next episode. <laughs> yeah, but you're not going to be able to remember shit or pronounce anything. <laughs> so none of us is mentally unsound at the end of this sh- show. That's a fair oh, point. No, I like, just assumed you guys are going to kill, kill yourselves. That's no, I'm fine. The dead of 16 on cinema is going to be like, yeah, me and Angus barely holding on and Mike not remembering who we are. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And let's probably wait. me singing too much and uh, making weird noises. Oh, God, he's going to sing. I hope not. Uh, all right, Angus. Let's well, Angus better yeah, start us, his movie, put, so I, I don't know. Uh, well, the Push beer is whatever. Oh, yeah. Is mine's actually mean, pretty good. It doesn't have, like, the stupid over-sweetness, so I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, mine's fine. Don't really yeah, give a my, shit. My bubble water is <clears> fine, too. Mine is slightly above average. Mine all has right, zero cool. calories. I and meant to drink says, some of the 500 cans of, of weird bubbly water you have in your house, but I didn't I didn't get a chance to, so I hope you have some next time I'm there. I probably will. I get them because the kid loves them, and then I drink them. Too. Yeah. All right. Man, this is fucking weird. We haven't recorded since fucking October a real episode, so... Yeah, it's yeah. way too long. It's, it's started off in a very weird spot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, should I just go ahead? I'm first. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, dude, like I, I was saying earlier before we were recording that. Oh Jesus, fuck! I forgot the that. That I'm gonna kill my what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't forget. Go ahead. <laughs> I guess you were saying you're gonna kill yourself. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um. Can I have like, your air fryer? No. Oh, all right. I'm, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's going with me. I love that thing. Oh, yeah. It's the best Great gift I ever got. <laughs> I you used it today. To made it in it, dude. That thing fucking piece rolls by piece. in the morning. Like you can air fry bacon on that fucker. It's so good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, it's so hard to not get greasy bacon. I sound like an advertisement. <laughs> no, that, that's what I'm saying. Like it drains all the bacon to the bottom. It's so f- fucking, or it drains all the grease. So nice. Oh, dude, fucking rules. Thank you, guys, man. You yeah, guys man. are great. You're welcome. We're going to get you another one in a couple of years. Like, well, he likes that. Let's get him another one. A bigger one. <laughs> dude, it oh, can't we got a get pretty big bigger. one. I don't think they make a bigger one. Yeah, no, this I one can fry like a fucking medium. turkey. Oh. No, you guys got yeah. a huge one. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Dude, it takes up half of my kitchen. <laughs> It's an what really? I imagine like something half the size of like a toaster oven. So I, I guess I'm a, way off. Yeah, I, I imagined it like toaster oven range, but it's like the size of like an obnoxious microwave. Dude, I, I had to. Te- I had to take the oven out, <laughs> like just what? to make room for this fucking thing. <laughs> See, I imagine TJ let me make the decision. And I was just like, yeah, he like he like he, yeah, he could use some room. He, so let me get the biggest needs- one. <laughs> He needs the walk-in air fryer. 
<laughs> That's how he's gonna kill himself. He's gonna air fry himself. Dude, I'd be fucking tasty. <laughs> the juices would all be yeah, contained in me. He'd be, be like, he'd be great. basting himself in beer and stuff. It'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, all that cores. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah, the rest, the rest of the cores I'm just pouring on my fucking head while I'm in there. <laughs> Taking a shower in it. <laughs> well, there goes our Jewish listeners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, as I was saying, those, like... Those uh, infamous chorus chambers? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> what the hell is going on in Colorado? That's what I want to say. <laughs> they Where fucking train that? people to the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they do. <laughs> Where's Alex Jones like when camps? you need him? We're gonna, I'm going to tag Alex in this episode. We'll get him on next, next week. <laughs> I don't think he's doing anything. He'll, he'll get us up to speed. All I'm right. sure he has some sort of algorithm, and now he knows of us because we said his name. Like even before we send it out, he just know he's in the, his name is in the airwaves. He just feels us. Wait, who is this? <laughs> yes. Huh? Who is this? Alex Jones. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, Alex. Who the fuck is Alex? <laughs> All right. Let me get back. All right. So yeah. I was saying, like, this podcast, like. It, it's become, like, a fucking hassle for me. Like, I love doing it. Like, the two hours we record, I absolutely love. But the lead-up to it always pisses me off, because I'm like, fuck, I could be watching something cool, and instead I'm, like, fucking writing notes about shit. So I always <laughs> yeah. wait till the last fucking minute. And we haven't, like, we've had this movie thing, like, this thing set up since October. Yeah. Five and I watched, I watched mine last night. I finished it at 3 a.m., Holy shit. Oh, wow. Like, I, I I took a nap first, and I was like, I'm just going to sleep through the night. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to watch the movie. <laughs> but what happened was, in my dreams, I started to dream about the movie I picked, what it was going to be. But that sounds it, like a lot of fun. It, what it was was, I didn't watch the movie, though, in my dream. I listened to an audiobook of it. Oh, my God. Oh, so I and you took to notes it. in your dream? I took notes on my dream of the audiobook version oh, that of this sucks. movie. Taking notes in your dreams. That's <laughs> just like dreaming homework. Dude, it's so fucking weird. So, in my dream, John Lithgow is re- reading the audiobook for the movie oh. that I picked out the night before called Two Mothers for Zachary. <laughs> Two Mothers <laughs> for Zachary. Okay. Which, which is wait, the did name- it air on the Lifetime Network? ABC. Oh my but- god. That's an ABC <laughs> original? Yes, and um, Lifetime, or one of those Lifetime, like, t- Hallmark, Hallmark, Hallmark had, like, a thing to do with it. But anyway, oh, so, like, the audiobook yeah. in my head began with John Lithgow, like, leaving creepy sexual message on his cousin's answering machine. Wait, so, is he in the movie? No, he's oh. not! <laughs> oh, man. For some reason, I just imagine John Lithgow reading an audiobook of this fucking film where he's just playing a creepy cousin. I don't know, and that had nothing to do with the movie, had nothing to do with the description I read. Next week, John Lithgow's going to be the next uh, next celeb to be in trouble. <laughs> His tapes are leaked. Oh, that reminds me. Um, back on the episode we recorded before the season break, um... Fucking, what's her name? Died, Mantis head. Who? Julie Strain that we talked about. Julie Strain died? Yeah. The one who fucking had, like, the head injury and shit? Yeah. Yeah, she died, like, a couple, like, about a month ago. Did she, like, die of shock that we were so insulting to her? I, <laughs> she I hope to the she show. heard that. I was like, I can't believe her. this is what I've become. They're so right. And she, well, she must <laughs> live like 10 minutes away from Angus so he oh can my just go God. apologize <laughs> to the graveyard. Well, I'll get the flowers. You just go put them in there. No, just just leave like a little like cassette tape of the episode there. <laughs> just of the fucking five minutes bashing her career where she was just <laughs> naked for 10 years and then they just threw fucking masks on her and still made her be naked. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's all we talked about. Yeah. No, we also talked about a uh, an edit of her in the Elephant Man. Oh fuck, that's right. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that was good. 
All right, so back to my movie, the real yeah. movie. I, I actually watched it. So it begins with, like, some... And Mike will know this. Do you remember, um, after wrestling, the show Silk Stockings? Oh, my God, I do. Do you remember? I love like, that there was such a... The, 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 the little theme song is what I remember. Yeah, that's what I'm talking so about. fucking the sexy. Song. Yes. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe TJ will be able to put it in a little clearer. <laughs> Dude, Dude it was my... so like like synthwave and outrun, like the beginning of it, and her putting her like stockings on and shit like that. Oh end. yeah, and then getting in the great. car and shit. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, that's how my movie begins is with music like that. Sweet. <laughs> And it's just, like, just bullshit of, like, uh, kind of the same thing where, like, just some chicks getting into a car with a <laughs> sounds. And Dude, when you said, like, after wrestling, I was so poised to get exactly what you meant. I was like, I'm fucking knowing this one. I got it. It's like, one. don't mess this one up. Don't mess it up. Don't <laughs> yeah. mess it up. <laughs> Dude, it would have hurt so much if you didn't know that music. And then you just play the music and Mike's like, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, the, the, what is this? My just silent reaction like for when, I have when no I watched idea. wrestling. It, when I watched wrestling, it was basically went from like naked women wrestling to like naked women putting on their stockings immediately after the show. <laughs> Dude, what are they time to be now a teenager. after wrestling? <laughs> yes. Do you know what they play now? Like after wrestling? Oh, I have no idea. I'm always it, it, watching baseball or something. Uh, I was gonna say it can't be shit like that anymore. Like, Dude, imagine no. if they just if it's they remade Nikita. Maybe they're remaking Silk Stockings as we speak. D- did they make remake Nikita? Yeah, a couple of times. What, they have some weird shit you, going on with Nikita. Wait, what do you what do you mean like the TV show? Yeah, I thought I thought they because there's like the a movie TV. and then yeah, there's like one or two TV adaptations and then his movie Anna is basically just Nikita oh, again. Yeah. yeah. Stupid movie. <laughs> never heard of any of this. All right, so did did we mention what the theme of this episode is? Uh, no. Um, so last episode oh. was a tie, <laughs> so we had to pick something Event Horizon related for the theme, and the theme is Jolie Richardson's mom. Wait, can we go back to Silk Stockings for just one second? <laughs> yeah, oh, no, that's what we're going now. We just had to get that out of the way because okay. we forgot how to do a show. And wait, wait, hold on. Doing. Who is wasn't, the mom? Wasn't, wasn't the point of silk stockings that like didn't it happen in Florida? It, probably. Do you remember it all? No, <laughs> I just remember I the theme song. I'm gonna look that up. You don't even remember the after. premise? Like it was just women putting on stockings and driving well, around. I, no, I used to watch like weird <laughs> shit. I, I never slept until like two or three in the morning, so I always watched late night TV. I even watched like Conan and or not Conan, but Jay Leno and stuff like that. Yeah, well, Conan so, was later than Jay Leno. I didn't even know Conan was. I I only knew Letterman. Yeah. I only knew Leno. No, yeah. I it was. I only watched Conan. I fucking Dude, if hated Leno. Stockings is in Florida. I'm fucking watching the whole show. <laughs> <I'm gonna download laughs> it. Just buy the fucking DVD. Oh set. my god! There's got. I bet there's a DVD. Yeah, there's got to be a DVD. Set. Dude, 1991 to 99. That's a lot of years for this show to Holy be on. Holy shit. The long, like, it's creator Stephen J. Cannell's longest-running series. Is he famous? I don't know. It's just on the... Oh, Hell yeah, okay. dude. It's on the oh, YouTube. The song. Well, are we just scrapping the movie podcast idea? Now we're just going to do <laughs> archaic TV? <laughs> no, it just looks talking. Uh, all the shows that played after wrestling show. in 1991 <laughs> to 1999. Dude, I'm so into it. <laughs> All right, all right, let's get back so to So for not this episode stockings. of 16 Ounce Cinema, we'll be talking about Silk Stocking Season 1, Episode 1. <laughs> Welcome to the new format. <laughs> Dude, I guarantee you we just picked up new listeners by doing that. <laughs> That's so true. Like we're women in their 50s show. right now. <laughs> we're going to launch our Patreon with our Silk Stockings show. <laughs> Dude, oh my god, dude, that could be our extra... Episode. Dude, you're a fucking genius. That's our extra uh, uh, a thing for sponsors or whatever the fuck. However no, the for the Patreon, uh, yeah. Like, we'll just do silk stockings episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> dude, we can knock this out is... three an episode. The show went on for fucking eight years. We'll have plenty of material. Yeah. 
too. Yeah, right. we'll be like fifty. But oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead, you go. All right. So <laughs> yeah. let, my movie, Two Mothers for Zachary, starts uh, off with two that Zachary's music. and a mother. Okay. And there's an angry, short-haired redhead with a southern accent yelling at a door, demanding to get a child back. Right. And this is, of course, Vanessa Redgrave. Which oh, is right. the theme, right? The theme, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've never said mom. her name. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, I wasn't going to. <laughs> oh, okay, I did. Dude, <laughs> I had to ask because I couldn't remember what the theme was. So I was like, I think it's Vanessa Redgrave. He's <laughs> like, why reason. the hell did I watch this movie? <laughs> Dude, I have no idea why we picked her. Like, what was the reason? Uh, I got to choose, right? Well, it was a tie. And then, oh. yeah, Mike's idea was, oh, it's Event Horizon related. Why not Jolie Richardson's mom? She was an actress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was a good call by me. I thought, like, she played the mother in the movie, and I was like, what scene is this? Is this a deleted <laughs> scene? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that completely forgets, like, characters. I'm like, oh, did I... Did I miss that character? Or I looked. Like, I looked oh, at man. her IMDb, and I was like, "Why the fuck is an Event Horizon listed?" Like, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I was like, "There's no. Why would this have been the choice? I didn't get it." All right. So yeah, she's yelling about like fucking some child at a door, and there's some women in the window, and they're like, "She she can't do that, right?" And then oh. just all of a sudden, it cuts to fireworks, and it's oh, like. Yeah. 18 but. months earlier, Jody, oh, okay. who is our main person, who is played by Valerie Bertinelli, who was in every one of these fucking made-for-TV <laughs> movies back in the 90s. You think she grinded them out and she got, like, 50 grand a year, just, like, just like Did, normal retail wages or something? Or? Like, fucking, yeah, Hallmark just paid her, like, a natural, like, fucking 45000 a year just to appear yeah, in whatever the fuck they wanted. contracted, like, old studio system. <laughs> 45,000 a year? That's not bad, honestly. Like Dude, I bet if we look her up like we did that one person, I bet she's worth like 17 million or something stupid. <laughs> what one Who did we look up? I think it was Mojo Nixon was 15 million dollars. <laughs> oh Mojo Nixon it said it was worth like, yeah. Was it 15 or was it something stupid? I thought Dude, it was, it was like, something crazy. Like 100 million for Mojo I Nixon. I think it was saying that he was worth like, like yeah, because he was worth more than Angelina Jolie, according to Google. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mojo, Mojo fucking Nixon. Mojo, no, he just plays it's every night. more that's than it. Angelina like... Jolie. I've what never... if his goal was just to make more money than Angelina Jolie? He's just like, this is what I gotta do. Well, even before, I gotta keep like, playing. Like when Angelina Jolie was a baby, he's like, oh, John Voight's got a kid. I gotta make more money than her. Yeah, he's a hateful fucker, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. He was competing with a baby. <laughs> Dude, I've never met another person who knew who Mojo Nixon was. <laughs> That's why I'm not bothering to explain him. All right. Google. They can find him. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's so much easier nowadays. He was the best yeah. Goomba in fucking Mario Brothers. Yeah, there you go. His claim to fame. That's why he made his fucking hundred million. He had that Mario money. <laughs> Dude, he got paid more than John Leguizamo and fucking Bob Hoskins. Wow. I'll be honest, I didn't know he was in that, so. He, he's, the one, he's the one that they turned in and he had the fucking harmonica. Oh, what? Who I saves, no like, idea. the princess and shit? Yeah. That's Toad. Awesome. He plays Toad. Yeah, Toad. Oh. I'm gonna have to right. watch that now. It's great. No. <laughs> it's a great movie. Okay. All right, so Jody Valley Bertinelli, is giving birth, and Vanessa Redgrave is telling this dude to leave. The dude's name is Keith. He's the father. Oh, and Keith. That's not a good name. No. <laughs> Keith and Jody All these names are... are awful. Keith and Jody are yelling at each other while she's giving birth, and he's, like, talking about the divorce papers and all this, like, oh. yeah, I'm gonna sign it right after you pop this fucking kid out. <laughs> so... I think you should do it before. I don't know how Right, yeah, I was say you gotta <laughs> yeah. do it before, because if you do it after, now you gotta, like... Well, he... Right, it's there, explained later. And... He I hope really... the baby comes out gay. He's like, it's not mine. <laughs> That's not <why>. mine. <laughs> <laughs> they... When they did the fucking thing where they look at the baby in the stomach, it's just like, 
sir, your your that's baby's a... gay. <laughs> what? That's a nope, thing. There's I'm like out. They, some sort of witchcraft. They look at the stomach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the fucking the stripes. sonogram. The gays have strength. Oh, I thought you meant like the baby is born, born and they like look at the ba- the newborn stomach and they're like, <laughs> oh. This and baby wants a, uh, fucking other what's dick. That thing, uh, they get, oh, what's that thing where you put your mouth on a belly button and you make noise with the mouth? God, it a, sounds like so stupid. Like a Z-bird or a raspberry. Raspberry, thank you. Raspberry. <laughs> like, shit, I can't imagine what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me one of my favorite things to do is threaten other men with belly kisses yeah you used to threaten me all the time with that <laughs> it's such I actually a f- completely forgot until you just said that it's such a funny thing to say to another man like oh you better be careful I'll give you some belly kisses <laughs> cause it's so demeaning <laughs> Imagine, like, like he actually does this when threatened, like, he's just out somewhere, like, he turns down the wrong street, and guy, like, flips his, like, a switchblade out, he's like, ah, give me a while, he's like, fuck you, I'm gonna kiss your belly. <laughs> Dude, if, we, if I would've just started belly kissing those fucking Puerto Ricans when we were mugged, <laughs> I could've saved me a right? pistol whip. <laughs> They would have turned tail and run, man. They can't, no, no man can stand up to masculine belly kisses. Yo, this man loco! He give me belly kisses! <laughs> <That's fucking laughs> <weird. laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Alright, so they're fucking yelling at each other. And fucking Vanessa Redgrave's mad because Keith's mom got to help hold the baby first. Oh. And they're yeah. taking the baby home, and the baby is in the back seat with Vanessa Redgrave and Jody. And fucking Jody is just like, all right, they have the kid in the back seat between the two of them, but the kid isn't in like a fucking baby seat or nothing. It's just uh, kind of just laying there. That's I the complain. '90s for you. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was not, gonna say yeah. Not only that, fucking Jody is smoking a cigarette next to the baby and blowing smoke in the goddamn baby. A fucking Two day holds face. I man. thought it was even like a real cigarette on set. And they had to they had to do like four takes. And oh just kept blowing man! The smoke in the face. You know what? It's probably twins, so they're actually probably blowing smoke in two babies. Like, faces. They gave two babies oh, cancer. That's right. Didn't they always the use twins because they could use them more or something? I like mean, that? they still do. Yeah. yeah. So you can get more hours of footage from because you can only have like the children there for a certain amount of time, and then you can just that's... switch kids because they're identical. <laughs> Yeah, even, like, in fucking Big Daddy, like, that kid was two kids, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Big Daddy. And, like, he was, like, fucking, like, ten or some shit. Ten kids? No, no, no. (laughs) Dude, ten uplets? What the fuck is that? Ten identical Dude, now I don't understand why, like, triplets aren't all famous actors. If I was a movie guy who needed a baby, I'd just be like, give me some triplets. We're we're working around the clock right here. What about the fucking octuplets, man? Like, you could just oh, hire one per fucking 12 minutes. I think <laughs> <laughs> you can't go in the movies. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, they need very pretty babies. So I guess that makes sense. Are there oh, any man. famous twins other than uh, Linda Hamilton? Uh, the Olsen. I didn't know Linda Hamilton was a twin. Yeah, Ashley and yeah. J- Jennifer Olsen. Dude, wait, Linda Hamilton's a fucking twin? Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, she's a twin. Or, wait, yeah. so... I thought she was a Terminator. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> she actually gave birth to a. Uh, I don't know what that movie was. Twins. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Danny I DeVito. He went to Arnold Schwarzenegger having sex with Linda Hamilton. That doesn't even make any sense. I was just like, ah. <laughs> Danny DeVito is twins. He's, there's that's, two of him. Yeah, yeah, that's He's I'm still thinking. a child actor. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Um, yeah, so Jody... This is going to be our first three-hour podcast. I'm so excited. I have to piss had so bad. We've already got in a fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was like 240. All right. Jody is just being a shit mom. She keeps fucking, like, smoking, smoking. and drinking. She <laughs> hates the kid and everything. And then fucking Vanessa Redgrave is like, you know what? Go go out, honey. You deserve a night out. I'll watch the kid. Don't worry. So fucking Jody goes out drinking with her fucking friend at a country like fucking roller bar, like where they're just like roller skating. Oh, cool. And 
She just stays out all night banging, like, fucking country dudes. Like, over and over? Like in I Hawaii? don't know. She banged one, stole his hat, but I assume this happened a lot. All right. Um... Vanessa they, Red... they don't wear condoms, they just wear cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> That's their protection. Saddle up, baby. Yeah, little, little tiny, little tiny cowboy hats. <laughs> like on the tip of your dick, like a little cowboy hat. Oh, don't, forget, that's, yeah. don't forget it's proper etiquette just picturing naked to tip cowboy your hat cowboy hats, when you say hello. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. Tip of the hat. <laughs> Your fucking balls grab the hat and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! All right, so Vanessa Redgrave is mad, and now like Jody gets a job at Walmart, but it's called like Value Mart, but it's obviously Walmart. And her like white trash friend introduces her to a chick named Maggie, and they talk Maggie about like their problems and shit. And then Maggie drops, like, a little hint that she's gay. Ooh, and Jody's like, oh, what the fuck, my white trash friend? Why didn't you tell me she was gay? I just set up a picnic with her. You so, can't have picnics over the gays. Yeah, no, that's fucking weird. <laughs> what year did right. this come out? 1996. But it's okay. it's based on true events from Okay. Uh, there, weren't, there weren't any gay picnics back in the 90s. It, no, gay picnics did not exist. Um, this is in Virginia, Richmond, Ooh. Virginia. Oh, oh that's o- only not, blackface that's not picnics. That's a great place to. Okay. Yeah, so that. Yeah, I should have brought that up. All right, so she, Jody brings her baby to the picnic, right? But they're like, just like, in the chick Maggie is like fishing, but then she's got her like baby eating Cheerios off of like just a tree. Like, there were just what? random Cheerios on a tree, and the baby was just eating them off of it. Is that what? how they grow? Yeah, like, like she didn't bring Cheerios with her. There were just Cheerios on a tree. And she's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> fucking eat them, whatever. <laughs> what? Like, did she yeah. put the kid up in a tree? And just no, like, the tree was... Chowing was... down on <laughs> tree cheeto- Cheerios? It was like a broken tree, and, like, I guess people just left Cheetos... Or Cheetos... Cheerios they there. Left babies to eat Cheerios off a stump? Yeah, basically. It was eat- yeah, yeah, okay, that that actually makes sense. Yeah. No, like, it doesn't. Okay, alright, my bad. And then some weird Swedish guy comes up, your baby is eating Cheerios off a revolta! <laughs> what? I don't know why that happened. No, the mid- uh, it's a midsummer reference. Oh. And he yells oh, okay. at the guys oh. pissing on the log. No, the baby, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so cheer, cheer, I get it. I get it now. It's funny. All right. So Maggie, like, tells, like, her that she gave up her kid for adoption because it was a rape baby. And oh. Oh. one of my favorite things. What, Keith? What? Keith? Keith. No, 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 no. This is the lesbian chick. She gave oh, up her child oh, oh, for adoption because okay, okay, okay. it was a rape baby. But my I, was, favorite... I was really like, no, not Keith. <laughs> no, Keith oh. is Keith's a cool dude. He just gave right. up like all his like fucking ownership of the kid and didn't pay. So like he kind of nice. rocks. <laughs> um, Maggie, the the lesbian. This is my favorite part. Is she dresses like Mike? What? <laughs> she just wears party, party sh- shirts and like fucking and red cargo shorts. shorts. Yeah, <laughs> so yes, she just reminds so me mean. of you. Um, Jody gets fired from Walmart, and Maggie oh. sneaks her. Wait, what? What did I write? Oh, Maggie sneaks her ass into the like Christmas party dinner. Oh. <laughs> like for Is the she starving or like what? No, nah, she's just like kind of like oh, I'm just oh. a friend, and she admits she's in recovery, so she can't drink and all that. Oh. Um. And then she. Oh, okay. Had, I see. She, I see your beer choice now. Right. Yeah, it's starting to make sense. <laughs> um, so she gives Jody a necklace, right? And they start like gay kissing out by the car. Oh, it's the best kissing with women. <laughs> it, it wasn't sexy, man. Like it was just because like oh, neither what? one of them seemed like they were into it. So oh, I wasn't into it. Was it time, you know, yeah. it was the nineties. Like I don't want anybody to kill me for this. So they were nervous. Like, yeah, <laughs> they were still yeah, like nervous about yeah. it. All right, so Vanessa is like, man, this is weird. Like, what's up with your friend? And then Jody is like, I, like, love her and 
fucking Vanessa Redgrave. I love her. And Vanessa Redgrave, she's like, I don't like this shit. I don't want no fucking lesbians running around. And she's like, you went through all these other phases. You were a whore. You were a drunk. (laughs) Now you're a lesbian. Mom, I'm a whore. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And fucking. May, or Jody is now on welfare and she won't let Vanessa Redgrave, the grandmother, Ooh. see the baby. Because she's like, oh no, whatever. And little Zachary, he breaks a bowl, right? Of stuff. Wait, are they like openly gay now or something? Or? They're living together, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And, or no, they're not living together, but they are kind of like having their thing. They move together a little bit later i think maybe they did and i forgot to write it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i did i, I fucking missed it moves yeah, in yeah, with maggie yeah, it makes yeah it makes yeah the yeah, yeah, make sense. Okay. yeah they're together yeah they're living together all right so little zachary breaks a bowl and jody just beats the shit out of him while um vanessa redgrave is on the phone with um maggie and maggie's That's just like cool. no no it's all good and then hangs up you now beat your children now jody's That's in awesome. therapy and she says she doesn't want Zach to see Grandma anymore. Never gives a oh. reason why. Well, she's the child beater. Grandma exactly. should take her Exactly. This sounds like the Hallmark equivalent of an exploitation movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, is there way more child beating? I, I'll get to that. <laughs> of course there All is. right. All right, yeah. so... Oh, Jody's... that kid's gonna die. <laughs> oh. Jody's brother says that she's being an asshole... Like, wh- why are you doing this, you fucking lesbian bitch? Like, you're just making everybody angry. And, like... I like when he reads the quotes. <laughs> you <laughs> lesbian bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because that's really in it. So, like, she's giving the kid dolls and shit to play with. So he's like, well, what the fuck, dude? Like, stop that. <laughs> you made this kid fucking weird. Yeah, get him a Ninja Turtle or something. <laughs> yeah. So now Vanessa Redgrave is suing her daughter for the rights to see the kid on the weekends because, she like Jody's not letting her see her see him at all, and but, Vanessa Redgrave's lawyer is the coach from Major League, which rules. That dad movie fucking rocks. I love Major League. It's one of my favorite rules, films. Yeah. So you know the yeah. coach, right? The old dude with the mustache. Yeah, of course. He's the fucking. He's the lawyer. Oh, that the lawyer's awesome. He is. He's gonna knock it out of the park. Holy shit, I do not have that <laughs> much good. left in this. I, oh, man, I didn't send it all. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. wait, yeah, I did. It's just a shitty movie. Okay. Oh. So, Vanessa gets full custody, right, of the baby. Because the kid has constant diaper rash and has been beaten by his mother, who's a lesbian whore. <laughs> <laughs> that was just wait, my wait, wait, own wait, 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 wait. Lesbian whore child beater. Don't forget that. Yes, yeah. lesbian whore child beater. So That's now they, fun. like, fucking Maggie and Jody steal the baby and they hit the road. But then they, wait, they get... can't. What? How do they steal the baby? It's their baby. They just fucking grabbed the baby. They didn't have custody anymore. They grabbed it and fucking ran. Oh, okay. So, but then when they get to, like, the first, like, fucking gas station, they're like, oh, well. This is stupid. Let's not do this. We're not. We're not criminals. Oh. So now the it, cut, it cuts back to regular time, where Vanessa Redgrave is banging on the door saying she wants the the fucking kid, and she brought a police officer with her, and now Jody is like playing up how much she likes the kid and everything. He's like, no, you can't take him. Blah blah blah. All this shit, and then the lawyer tells her that. She has to say it was just a lesbian phase so she can get her kid back. And Maggie has to leave her own apartment. What? <laughs> yeah, Maggie has to leave her own apartment that she's been paying for. Because fucking she had to go around and fucking cause this whole, like, fucking scene. Like, because she put it in the newspaper. About, you know what? Like, I like not... Maggie. She wears cool shirts Maggie and rules. Like, honestly, yeah. Maggie, the <laughs> real lesbian in this, is it actually It sounds like everyone in this show is great except for Jody. Jody's a cunt. Jody sucks! Fuck Jody! Yeah, it... boo gay Jody, yay Maggie. So, she's not leaving now because they have a gay rain kissing scene, which is Ooh. a little hotter than the first one, I gotta yeah, admit. Yeah, I like the rain. 
Yeah. All right. That's what I like. <laughs> Sorry, I just like the rain. Get so now wet. <laughs> wet lesbians. <laughs> All right, so now there's protesters outside of the courtroom, and they hate lesbians. So, like, they have signs that are just like, fuck lesbians. Oh. It doesn't really say oh, cool. that, I guess. Yeah, no, I got the, it's the uh, it's what they felt. You felt their feelings. I got the you. ABC, 8 p.m. Thursday you're night. Like a, fuck you're lesbians. like in Lifetime Channel Clairvoyant. Fuck lesbians. <laughs> All right, so now in court, Jody says that her stepdad molested her. But she never told anyone. Oh. So, like, that's why she's all crazy and shit. And her best friend now is on the stand and says, like, what an awful person Jody has become and has changed and all this. So now Vanessa Redgrave gets full custody. And Jody can visit, but she's not allowed to visit the baby without, like, she's not allowed to visit the baby with Maggie. Because they don't want the lesbian couple seeing. What? 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 Okay. Yeah. What did Maggie do? Other it's than st- just accomplice the kidnapping. Exactly. Well, yeah. Dude, there's that. Being gay in the nineties. Yeah. The right. Like, the yeah. Did this, this movie just hate lesbians? Yes. No. The nineties hated the gays. That's Everybody the, the hated gays in the nineties. Yes. Like that's the no. point Basically, of the movie. Like Jody is this just terrible monster of a person. And then she meets a lesbian who's like a hundred times worse who's... because she's just a lesbian. And thank <laughs> God Jody's okay despite that. <laughs> but the thing is, like, the lesbian's okay. It's the. Jody is a piece of shit. That's what I, I know. I know. Like, it doesn't. Like. And the thing is, like, the way they kind of build this movie is like, don't you feel bad for these lesbians? It's like, no, I feel bad for the one real lesbian. <laughs> Not this mean fucking fake one that's just beating her child. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, years later, they have an appeal, and Jody gets custody now. But then Vanessa's lawyer, the coach from Major League, wants to take it to the <laughs> Supreme Court. Oh, yeah, what? way up there. So they take it to the Supreme Court. They missed a few steps, but that's cool. How, yeah, how no, does I don't know. Child custody battle go to the Supreme Court because of the fucking gays. I don't know. 90s oh, okay. gays. It was weird. It was probably the first time a uh, a lesbian's mother tried to take custody from a lesbian couple baby before. So I could yeah, but the, like writing Maggie out of it entirely. Wait, is it based on a true story or is this yes, like a fake? Yes, thing? oh, it's based oh, on a true story. Yeah. I got a funny right. thing about that. <laughs> um, cool. All right, I like so humor. Maggie gets fired from her job, and she kind of subtly blames. Um, the entire thing on the media attention that Jody brought, and then Jody just fucking flips out. And she's like, "Fuck you! I'm leaving!" and all this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and just and she like fucking packs up the car and shit. And this is my favorite part. Fucking Maggie, the calm, cool lesbian, tells her to calm down. She's like, "Dude, just have a smoke or something, or vacuum, do something. Just calm <laughs> down." So she tells her to vacuum, which is hilarious to calm down. Um, she's angry, and she's gonna, like, and she goes to the the gas station to fill up, and she's like, I'm, I'm just leaving town, I'm angry, all this, except an old lady comes up to her and like, hey, you're that lesbian, right? Oh, no. And then she's just like, y- yeah, and then she's like, you're right, your mother's being a piece of shit, you deserve oh. that baby. So... It goes to the court, and it turns out she's unfit to be a mother. Yeah, and go then at oh, the end, awesome. And then at the end, it says Jody is still continuing her fight to have her child. Oh my god! Please tell us you fucking googled what happened. Oh no, I don't give a fuck. Oh, uh, how is that a story that's movie worthy? <laughs> can Can I tell you this though? Like this was the funny yeah. part. I was I was saving. I was gonna put it in my fucking selling point, but it, it's based on the trial. All right, think about this. This is this whole case involves gays, right? Yeah. It's based on the real life trial of Bottoms versus Bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! I swear to God, that's what I fucking found on Wikipedia. It said based on the trial of Bottoms versus Bottoms. <laughs> I bet God wrote that and went, that's fucking funny right there. 
I that might have converted me. <laughs> Holy shit. And that is two mothers for Zachary. Holy fuck, dude. Oh. I think that's so bad. bad. No, Zachary's not. Well, maybe. I don't know. I didn't follow up after 96. Yeah, yeah, she got custody in 1997 and killed him. We'll let our, we'll let our fans know at the beginning of next episode. Yeah. What we'll do Zachary. our research. They I'm were... going to buy a book on it, probably. <laughs> it is interesting. <laughs> Mike's already Googling bottoms versus bottoms. Bottoms versus bottoms? I almost Googled it. I didn't want the noise of the keyboard to distract us. I'm sorry. I'm going to remember shit. it. Kay Bottoms sued her daughter Sharon Bottoms for custody of Sharon Bottoms' son, Tyler <laughs> Sharon Dustin. Sharon Bottoms? Yeah, it's like Tyler Dudu or... Yeah, Dusto. <laughs> Who was it? And it? It was presided by Judge Buford Parsons. <laughs> this is like if, if we just made up names while we were drunk. Yeah. All right, you Kay Bottoms versus Sharon Bottoms, Judge Buford Parsons presiding. Dude, I hope Keith's first name was, like, fucking Tops. <laughs> I guess it was Landmark because... So, it was Landmark because the ruling... Part of the reason why, the major reason why the ruling was against the mother was because she was a lesbian. And that yeah. homosexual sex was, at that time, illegal in Virginia. Yeah. Okay. That, but okay. One of the things they kind of, like, gloss over a lot in the movie... It really did seem like she beat the shit out of that kid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, but for no reason, the... like, there were certain, like, things, like, that they brought up in, like, the, in the courtroom where she was, like, the the grandmother was, like, oh, yeah, like, he did something and it was just, like, I'm gonna send myself to the corner and just sat in the corner, like, all weirdly and shit. And, like, there was one part where, like, she came back with the kid and he had, like, a big cut on his chin, but they never explained it. She started fucking kicking that fucker, too. I don't know. Like, it seems to me like she was just beating the shit out of that kid, though. But they kind of ignored that. And I guess this movie won the GLAAD award. Like, for (laughs) best Uh, fucking representation. You mean only? It was the only option that year? (laughs) It was 96. Like, what else to... I was going to say the birdcage. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man, I, that better have won. No, it didn't, this one. I think birdcage is 94. Greatest gaze of all time. Uh, so so she got the custody back, and then the grandma got the custody back again after that? I bet we could find this dude on Facebook. Keith or the Zachary? Maybe with the Tyler Dosto. Uh, well, no, not even face. I bet he'll be on. Um, he'll become Twitter a fan. Hundred percent. Dude, what if he becomes a fan of the show because of this? <laughs> oh, oh, she's oh, dead now. She died in February. What? February of last year. Really? Sharon Bottoms Mats, M A T T E S was her like next last name. Maybe so did she get married again? again, or? I guess. To a man or a woman. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's it, anyway. So, Mike, you watched a movie. (laughs) Yeah, I did watch a movie, but before we get to my movie, I would like to one more time go back to Silk Stockings, if I may. Oh, I was just playing it. (laughs) Go ahead. You were Googling it. uh, the background. Oh, yeah. It is, uh, it's on Hulu, all nine episodes, all seasons. And I would like to read the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, whatever that's called about the, uh, about synopsis? the show, if I may. Yeah, the synopsis. All right, here we go. Two Palm Beach homicide detectives yes! investigate crimes that they call silk stockings. Uh, Murderers that uh, expose the seamy and steamy side of high society. The investigators frequently involve going undercover to expose macho men or their beautiful <laughs> women companions oh, yeah. who to lounge about in swimwear or lingerie. <laughs> Dude, that's silk stockings. Wow. You two need to do this. You guys I'm, need to become the silk stockings like guys. I'm 100% watching episode one tonight when we get off. I cannot wait. All right, we do have our first Patreon episode, people. <laughs> Brett, get on that. All right. But um, I did watch a movie. 
uh, as TJ alluded to, I watched a movie called Howard's End. Because oh, okay. my mom... Yeah, I think uh, I told did, you guys about it. No. My can, my can, mom can made me you, watch this with her. What was, it, what was that? Can I tell you what I know about this movie? Yeah. Oh, fuck um, yeah. Do you guys remember the show The Critic with John Lovitz? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they had like a little, like, because like, they would parody movies, but they had Howard yeah. Stern's End. Uh. Oh and my God. it was the movie, but Howard Stern was just telling all these women to take their clothes off. Dude, I gotta look that up that's, later. That sounds that, amazing. That's I'm literally like, all what? I know about this movie. Is it's <laughs> set in old times, and then Howard Stern told women to show their tits. <laughs> so I'm just unfortunately gonna... <laughs> there's there's no tits in this film. Oh. Is there Howard also Stern? unfortunately there's no child beating. Oh, man. I thought this was like man. one of those movies where nothing happens, but I guess you're about to tell us. Yeah, thanks for spoiling it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so basically, I, I, all right. Well, I guess um, it's my turn for a movie. Is it long? I chose this because uh, my mom made me watch this with her and her eighty-year-old friend that like, like recently the movie for the like, show when I was oh. eight. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, when I was eight. This like, was, like she 30. gave the suggestion for the show. She's like, no, you're oh, watching this. I called this. her up. I was like, hey, what? So, yeah, hey, you remember that movie in Lake Worth? I was like, why do you talk like that? Anyway. Michael, you got to watch that movie for your show. Oh, except I imagine that in Polish. <laughs> I mean, that's close, right? That's... <laughs> so, like, Arnold? Arnold? So, this was the movie instead of fucking Aladdin, because they were both out at the same time. Um, I didn't want to go, because I think I was just scared to go your alone. Your was like, like oh, what should Howard's I take end. a nine-year-old to, Aladdin or Howard's End? What's Howard's End? Well, I think the 80-year-old woman wanted to see Howard's End. Old bitch, let the kids see Aladdin. (laughs) So anyway, this star is uh, obviously Vanessa Redgrave as top billing and 16-ounce cinema favorite, Anthony Hopkins. 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 That's That's awesome. (laughs) Also, uh, lots of famous people TJ would know, probably. Um, (laughs) Also, a woman named... Yamima Redgrave, who is the niece of Vanessa Redgrave, oh. and plays some Doctor on Doctor Who. So I have a double like Redgrave whammy, so that's cool for me. Uh, the byline of the flick is uh, a businessman thwarts his wife's bequest of an estate to another woman. So I hope you guys are fucking ready. For this. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I felt oh. like my just energy go away. I was like, oh, it's like legal. Lawyer chamber <laughs> drama. Well, my so, movie was you, all legal and lawyers and shit. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. So, um, my to, to start off the energy, the film starts with a five minute slow walk to <laughs> soft jazz <laughs> by Vanessa Resgrave <laughs> in like this cool garden, like you know, English scene at night. Um, but fortunately, Fortunately, right after, Helena Bonham Carter shows up looking exactly like she did in Fight Club, which is super weird because this is like 19 or 1899. This came out in 1899. Um, she... Actually, wait, uh, no, wait, there's like there's cars with cranks, so it's got to be like 1939 or something like that. or something. 1909. Um, actually, actually, yeah, I think I Googled it. I think it was like 1900 something. <laughs> sure. so. It was 1996. <laughs> ha- Howard. <laughs> In 2099. Undertaker was about to throw mankind off hell in the cell. <laughs> and this movie was happening here in England. Um, so after that was 97. Little walk, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Helena Bonham Carter from Fight Club. <laughs> you man. Keep Fight Club. Are you just going to introduce her as that? And, 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 <laughs> that's just her Fight name Club. throughout the whole movie. You actually need, oh my god, you're Helena Bonham Carter from Flight Club. Flight Club. Flight Club. Flight Club. <laughs> it's such a Mike, different movie. Mike would get the name wrong. <laughs> yeah, I totally would. You're Helena Boneham <laughs> Carter from Flight Club. Bo- well, that's her name. Bon- Bonham, Boneham. I got, I got the gist of it. That was pretty close. Is she married um, to the dude? The, 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 yeah, like still? Oh, I don't yeah. know if they are right now. This For some moment. reason, I forgot that was her. Well, I knew they were, but I just yeah. I don't know if they um, still are. So after these slow jazz walks, Helena has sex with a man who regrets it. <laughs> and he regrets it by saying that like he has to go to Nigeria and there's no white women welcome. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> oh, nice. hopefully Nigeria now... <laughs> 
Now I love it's this open dude. to white women. Yeah. I can see like Mark <laughs> doing cool. this like, hey, yeah, I I gotta go to Kmart and there's no white women walking. No. Just, just make up some bullshit Wait. just to get away. I think the biggest makeup of that would be like, where the fuck's a wa- where the fuck's a Kmart? Well, it's as so far like, away as Nigeria, so. So that's the only one that's still open. All right, so I, I wrote a little, I wrote a little uh, setup for the story because it gets super complicated. Right? So there's three families, three families. Uh, one is the rich capitalist named the Wilcox, okay. who are all very rich and they want to continue being so. Anthony Hopkins is one of them. Hey, hold um, on. The other, yeah. You rewatch this? I mean, like, technically, sure. Yeah. No, but like. Did you like? As oh a kid, yeah, no, you... no. I watched this. Yes, I watched this again. Yes. But I'm saying, like, as a kid, were you like? Did you remember seeing it as a kid and be like, "Yeah, that was a good movie. Let me rewatch that." No, one. I, I remember Anthony Hopkins and I remember the gardens. That's that was just like my only. And remember being bored as fuck because I. Was <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, why would you choose and this obviously again? That I could have been watching a lot. I did kind I of think that Angus was asking if you were bringing this show from memory from when you were eight. <laughs> <laughs> from eight oh. years old. Yeah, I thought that would have been amazing. Hey, no, no. I'm saying I can't like... remember how to say Anthony Hopkins right, but I fucking remember this fucking. <laughs> And Helena Bonham Carter the fucking from movie Rain Man. He took like, notes <laughs> as a kid. He's just going off of those. Dude, I just imagine they're like really shitty stick figure pictures of things going on. <laughs> and there's somebody riding a fucking carpet because he wished he was watching Aladdin. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's actually Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> so Anthony Hopkins played this blue genie. <laughs> Oh, that would make sense. Okay, so who's playing a lot in, my, in, in this in this wonderful Howard Stern? Uh, an all Anthony Hopkins <laughs> cast of Aladdin. <laughs> Young Hopkins, uh, Sea of Man Hopkins. Yeah, they're all they're all different Hopkins. All different Hopkins characters. Jafar the monkey's Hopkins. actually Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Um, so the, the, the Wilcox, the, the rich ones, the other ones are the, called the Basts, and they're the poor ones, and they're, they're like the guy, Paul, who wants to go to Nigeria, and then the third family is a German family called the, Sh- the, Sh- the Schlegels, the Schlegels, <laughs> okay. um, and they're, sure they're like that, middle class, okay. uh, Helena Bonham Carter from Fight Club is one of them, <laughs> and so, so is the main redhead chick, uh, <laughs> Anyway, so that's that's the setup of the story. Those are the three families involved. Yeah, this is thrilling. Um, well, the, well, the guy Paul fucked Helen so good that she wrote her aunt that she's getting married and she's very happy about it. But Paul freaks out like almost immediately and be like, "Nope, I am not marrying you, Helen," and like dips. And so her aunt comes there and she's like, oh, "I'm not, I'm not getting married. Sorry, <laughs> you came here." Oh, so that was that's awkward. drama. Yeah, it's a net. Yeah. Next, the Sh- the Schlegels and the Wil- Wilcox. They uh, we we learned that they met each other in, in Germany once, like a couple years ago. So that's how they know each other. And the poor family shows up because Helen, whose character is also named Helen, steals this fucker's umbrella. And she apparently always steals people's umbrellas because she has like twelve umbrellas in her like front of the cow. Or hey, hold house. up. Yeah, I'm holding. You said Helena plays he- Helen. Yeah. Okay, well, you said the same name, but there's an A added to her name in real Oh, life. no, there's no... Oh, is it? What? Yeah, it's Helena, and then her name is oh. Helen in the movie. Schlegel. Oh. Well, they cut off the A for the Schlegel, then. My mistake. Schlegel. <laughs> <laughs> Helena. Oh, I was fucking up her name. TJ was totally dead on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for stopping me. <laughs> What's going on? Dude, hold up. Get... <laughs> Can I say, uh-huh. like, I'm looking at the cast, I'm sorry, but there's somebody whose credit is man asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> Siegbert uh, Brawler uh, is I I man asking a question. Movies, and that could be my, like, role in every movie, man asking a question. I just... I wish, like, I remember that. I wish they'd said the question. <laughs> yes. I want to know like, oh, yeah, that Man, you asked lovely weather, isn't it? And maybe it was, like, the waiter. Like, what would you like to do, sir? And that's a question. He was in the fucking movie, so. So that's what, that's what I want. Now, I want to be the actor, but I want to be credited not as man who asked the question. Man who asked, how may I help you? 
<laughs> Men who ask hypothetical philosophical. Oh, I don't even know. What I'm doing. <laughs> okay, bye. I, <laughs> I fucking. <laughs> All right. On a uh, on a side note about Helena, in real life, after starring in this movie with Emma Thompson, I don't know if maybe I don't know who Emma Thompson is, is, but she's. All right, she started in Emma Thompson's sister's movie. Who is uh, anyway? She played a. After starring with this movie, she also started another movie with Emma Thompson's sister. Flight Club. And then she played <laughs> she played a love interest to Emma's husband in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and apparently fucked that guy so good that he ended up divorcing Emma Thompson, which is super. So rude, wait, Helena Bottom <laughs> Carter f- stole Emma Thompson's from man from Fight Club, yes. After being in yes, a bunch after- of movies about stealing Emma Thompson's man. After being in a movie. With Emma Thompson's sister, yes. Like, they met on the... Like, all three of them were there, and then they all three... Be, uh, and her and, and, and the husband was in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein together. Oh. Oh, I got all that out. Yeah. Wow, I am on such, like, a fucking Wikipedia thing. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I'm looking up Kenneth Brogna because of Emma Thompson. Yeah, Kenneth Branagh. I don't know where the fuck I am. Is that The Simpsons? What is Kenneth Branagh? <laughs> no, he's, a uh actor director i once read a review of i forget which one of his movies but it's like kenneth brana directs his favorite actor kenneth brana <laughs> <laughs> that rules I mean, you don't know anybody as well as you know yourself that just makes sense oh, all right you... so finally we start <laughs> never, is mind. With us? never mind no, 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 he's deep on. down at the howard's end <laughs> all right so finally we start hearing about the you know howard's end which is the uh the house that's the show movie is about uh, it took a six-minute conversation between two women sipping tea and babbling a long time. Mostly about, like, women things, but also about childhood homes, which is why... Oh, Howard so this movie passes important. the Bechdel test. Very good. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's when women talk to themselves. I mean, to each other, right? Uh, yeah, uh, are there more than two female characters? Do they ever talk? Do they talk about something other than a man? Nice. Fuck yeah. I think that might be the first one we watched. I mean, I passed the <laughs> first movie we watched that passes the Bechdel test. That's actually probably right. true. Uh, <laughs> I don't even I know what that is. Like, I just he just told me. I, I know, you. but I'm just saying. Like I never like I've heard it before, but I never knew what it was. Uh, I, yeah, I, I kept hearing it. And I was just like, ah, I'm gonna ignore this. Like I, I heard know. it on a podcast <laughs> like a week ago, and I still was like, oh. I don't know what the fuck that is. Well, they did a so, bad job of not explaining to you. Well, they that's didn't really explain podcast. it. They were just joking around, and I don't, I don't uh, know. But yeah, that's the first time I've ever heard about well, it. Well, look, like, now really. we've had an educational moment. For all of us. Maybe we could all get right, so state sponsorship? The... <laughs> a feminist or fucking <laughs> Educational <podcast>. program? <laughs> Um, I, I think it's the first time I see Vanessa Redgrave since her jazz walk, but really I have trouble determining which women is which because they all look the same because they're all wearing like old english fucking outfits and i can't fucking tell us who um but i end up realizing it is indeed red grave i've been seeing on and off and uh, she has a uh, she has a little dinner with everyone and she tells a feminist that she was very happy not having the vote and thinks only men should have opinions hell yeah so dude. she's great <laughs> dude she, she, has the... she has such great opinions in both movies <laughs> Women yes, shouldn't vote yes. and lesbians are evil. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I fucking love her. Unfortunately, she also has mild dementia, and I think and she's going to die soon in this one. So. Yeah, well, mild dementia for, for Redgrave. Take the go with the uh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> now we see Anthony Hopkins live in a, in a... He lives in a very suicidal, depressing house where you would drink scotch and kill yourself. <laughs> is my first impression of this Kill yourself in an air home. fryer? <laughs> I don't think oh they my had that god! Back yeah, in yeah, nineteenth century air fryer. <laughs> Can you imagine Anthony huge. Hopkins pouring like old beer on his body, <laughs> just smoking a pipe in a chimney? He's like it's time for me to it's end. Like a servant at a bellows outside of it. <laughs> the waiter comes up. How may I help you? <laughs> That's the man who asked the that. question. Is today the day, sir? <laughs> Pouring beer on himself. I think like, it is indeed. Yes, Bill. <laughs> Bill? No, he doesn't have a name. He's the man who asked the oh. question. 
Oh, that's right. <laughs> the office is like... Now, that would be man whose question was answered. <laughs> this is the whole character line. <laughs> man whose question was answered. Now we need a whole new actor for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, so Anthony Hopkins uh, killed himself in an air fryer, a 19th no, no, century he, he, air no, he, fryer. So he's in the suicidal home, and we learn that his wife is uh, Vanessa Redgrave, and she wants to give Howard's End, her child at home, to the Schlegel woman who has befriended her, and everyone is really angry and pissy over it because they want Howard's End, even though they haven't been there in like 10 years. They just really want to keep it. Uh, then we have like a year-long time jump for no reason because time really just kind of flows in this movie. It doesn't really have any measurements. And then we meet Bash again, uh, the fellow with the stolen umbrella and also the dude who fucked Helen. Helena, or Helen, yeah, Helen in the beginning. I guess he came back from Nigeria. And the, Sh- the Schlegel woman and Helen- Helena want to help him because he's poor. So like they meet up again and be like, hey, we can help you, we're rich. Um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and this is when um, Redgrave dies. So this is the end of Redgrave. Oh, no. This is no longer. <laughs> but the but the best part is, because that's over, this is now an Anthony Hopkins movie. So Hell yeah. Way cooler. Oh, I thought he was dead in the air fryer. No, <laughs> I was that? saying that. No, he that, wanted he to that do up. that. <laughs> <laughs> he never got um, around to so, it. <laughs> so there's like an eight-minute scene of them eating where Anthony Hopkins <laughs> talks about how meat food? is superior and how people aren't that, and how poor people suck, and they're sneaky, and you shouldn't help poor people. Because they don't air fry their food. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only air fryer in England. He's like, this is all mine. The eight minute scene. You guys aren't having any Anthony of Hopkins talking about the joys of an air Just fryer. Just making jerky <laughs> from like horses. Showing them, showing them all the things they can cook in their air fryer. Like the an poor people show. only have sheep, sheep bacon. This oh, man. Bullshit. He's putting mutton in I the air fryer. I have horse bacon. Mushrooms? No, they don't belong there, do they? What? You can do it! Mutton! I said mutton. Oh. Oh. What is mutton? Uh, that's, uh... Mutton chops? I see, it, like, yeah, she... Yeah, fantasy me. books a lot. Oh, okay. Cool. Um. Oh, yeah. Alright, so this is kind of where I tune out, and I, I, I kind of wrote a few things. I was like, this is... This movie has a lot of things going for it, and the biggest thing is that they keep, every scene is just like... There, there's two scenes, there are three scenes that are really long, but otherwise they, like, fucking snap... And so you don't have to pay attention to them because it's just a new scene pops up very quickly. Because it's really just old people talking to themselves, to each other. and you know, Kind of like our podcast. Boring. So, Yeah, yeah kind of like that. Except we're not rich. Oh, yeah. We're not old. We're not fighting over a house. Nor, we're not in England or anything. So. Yeah. Um, Why don't we just buy a house together and then fight over it for like a season? Do that. That'd be cool. I think we did that 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work out there, well. Yeah, we could have been like the original podcasters. Oh, yeah. The OGs. We should have done this 12 years um, ago. So yeah, with we, our roommate, we Jay that, Gordon. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah our first not. guest. First guest special. Our first so kiss? We, uh, we lo- <laughs> no, our What? So we learned that um, Anthony Hopkins wants the uh, <laughs> Mike doesn't want to talk about dog. our first kiss. No, I didn't Out say first the kid. You said it. I just, I just went along. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about oh, like that that's... first kiss went. <laughs> first belly kiss. Oh, no, no, no. No, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta kill a belly kiss TJ when I see him. Um... You know what's funny? Well, I, I, always, I also it. have, like, an extreme phobia of, like, my belly button? Belly I don't like to touch my belly button. <laughs> or to have anything touch my belly button. Dude, nobody likes their belly button How do you touch. clean it? It must be fucking disgusting. No, it's not. It doesn't. It's fine. I'm looking at it now. But it, although it kind of like freaks me yeah, out. Like, you can touch your it. own, right? Too deeply. No, I can't touch it. Oh, you can't even do your own? No, like, no I like, get like not letting anybody else touch it. But if you can't do it yourself, that's fucking gross. It like gives me this like yeah. sharp, weird chill in my spine. If I touch I, Like I just... I had just my. That's kind of normal. Because everybody fears, like, if you touch your belly button, like, your hand's going into your insides. Or, well, if someone no! else does I don't, it. No! I don't fear nobody that at fears all. that. Oh, okay, well. That's not true. If I touch it, I just think that that skin is just going to, like, turn to slime. If I touch it too hard, I want to pee a lot. Dude, I, I think you, means, you watched the movie The Thing and just got scared of bellies <laughs> eating hands? Like, what the fuck? I don't know. Oh, man. the guy who did Get Out's remaking The Thing. How do you feel about that? Wait, what? 
the guy um, Jordan Peele is remaking the thing. I wish he would. Didn't they just do the thing? Own thing, yeah, his own thing. <laughs> I didn't mean to say. Well, he it did like his that. own that thing. Stupid. What do you mean? He did his. Yeah. I, I wish he would do continue to make original movies. I don't want to see him do any remake. Yeah. And yeah, remaking the thing yeah. is kind of. Oh dumb. yeah, he's, he's doing Candyman. To... That's right. Yeah. Well, he's doing Candyman so too. Anyway, yeah. So he's remaking yeah. the yeah, thing. Yeah, he's doing Candyman. And he's remaking Candyman. Yeah. I'd rather see him do like his, I. I love that Candyman's being remade, but I'd love to see him just continue making original works. Do you guys remember oh, so yeah. like eight years ago when they were talking about rebooting Candyman, but they were gonna make him a white dude? That's. No. Does it, Did everybody get upset? Yeah, well, because, because this whole backstory hinges on him like being a, a slave who was like abused. Yeah, right? like oh, yes. fucking spoiler. I didn't ever seen Candyman. Oh, well, <laughs> basically, shit. yeah. I'm kidding. I'm eventually. I'm never gonna but, remember, so it's fine. But it's just funny. Like they like talk about like whitewashing shit. Like yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> like, whitewash <laughs> roots. It's I, no. Well, they, they yeah, can just make just an Irish all slave. White it's fine. <laughs> That's yeah, Irish people. It's fine. They got it. <laughs> Irish roots. <laughs> Just yeah. recast Lavar Burton with like Chris Pratt. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> I was gonna make a potato joke. I didn't. I didn't have one. Though, so. End of the day. <laughs> like whatever his All his right. name is, he's like that's not my name, and he has like a Mick in front of his last name instead. <laughs> 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 I wish we were good at accents, because we could, like, do a bit. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking Irish would die immediately. They would have such horrible fucking sunburn. I can't even imagine. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they would show up in the fucking Florida plantation, and then, like, a week later, like, well, we need the African They ones. would look like they've been <laughs> in an air working. fryer for 30 minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. With Anthony Hopkins just pouring beer all over him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor people. Anyway, so uh, I thought your movie Hopkins. was over. Not yet, friend. Uh, <laughs> so he wants to have sex with uh, Miss Schlegel, the hot redhead, uh, which makes sense. <laughs> Miss Schlegel, really eighteen ninety-eight. Uh, but but he wants to be uh, proper about it. So instead of like you know doing anything untoward of her, he asks to marry her, and she says yes, and then they smooch, which is that's how they kiss. They smooch. Uh. I couldn't even properly. They smooch. Yeah, no, that's disgusting. <laughs> You're not a good smoocher. All right, so anyway, it turned out that uh, Hopkins really did hate the poor as much as he said <laughs> because he gave Schlegel, the woman, the Siegel woman, that bad advice about Bast, you know, Paul Bast, and then he quit his job over it, and now he's making way less money in a shittier job. Um, Bast, you know, he's keeping his head up because that's what they do. Uh, so we finally get to Howard's End, and it kind of looks like it, you imagine an English country home to look. It's kind of a fucking shithole, but it's like on 50 acres and has a cool garden, so it's like... You know what would be cool? Still. If this movie was yeah. Howard's End on the edge of the park or something? Oh my god, and everyone <laughs> died. And they just so. made it like a cool exploitation film? <laughs> Wait, hey, TJ, would you be cool if if uh, if Jordan Peele remade this into uh, into that? If he made a Howard's, Howard's End at the end of the park? End of the park? Yeah, how would that make you feel? So it's all this that just, like rich people and poor people jockeying, and they all meet up at this house and just get like assaulted by David Hess. But it would still be like a bla- you know, something to do with like racial times. Oh, in America. Yeah, yeah, of course. Has David Hess with a black guy? Yeah, no, just a black face. <laughs> they, they bring and it back instead of Anthony dead. Hopkins, it'll actually be Kanye, so it'll be fine. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Anyway, I got two. I got two paragraphs <laughs> left. Let me let me get through this. All right. So Helen brings the uh, poor people, which is the best, if you remember. And Paul Paul Bass brings his fat wife, which we don't remember her because I didn't bring her up at all because she's irrelevant. <laughs> but he is married. He's a two timer. So uh, Helen brings Helen brings the poor people to Hopkins' daughter's wedding, uh, and hilarity ensues because it turns out that Hopkins was actually fucking Bass's wife what? a long time ago. Yeah, so like a gentleman, he runs away from her and quits the engagement. Literally. He's like, I'm out of here, and we're not getting married anymore. And he runs away. <laughs> um, <coughs> and then this is, uh, uh, unfortunately, where I learn the dude Paul. His name is actually Leonard. And I have no idea why I kept calling him Paul the whole movie. <laughs> they don't even sound the same at all. And what's 
whatever. And and Paul is actually the name of Hopkins' even younger son, who Helena fucked at the beginning of the movie. So two different characters. Wait, so fuck wait, me, so I was she, way off on that She wasn't one. banging Leonard? Not originally. She fucks Leonard soon, I'm coming up to that. Okay. That was actually just oh, another character. Oh, there's two dudes. Okay, because I still have the cast yeah, listed. There's two, so you're there's just introducing no, us no, to a whole two, other okay. character who's been there the whole time, yeah. but you <laughs> melded them into two until the end. To be fair, he never shows up again, so it's it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, you could have just come out of Paul then. Can I? I know, but I I like this is this was my epiphany. I'm like, well, I gotta share it now. I this is why we give you so it. much shit that we say you're just <laughs> yeah, making up your movie. reasonably. <laughs> How much more do you oh, have? Yeah. I, uh, one paragraph. Can I can I just say this? Yeah. Because um, I have the Wikipedia pulled up, and I know we said we wouldn't ever do this, but like it's just been catching my eye. It just says, "In his rage, Charles beats Leonard with the flat of a sword." Oh, you fucking! I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Man. What do you think? I wouldn't fucking get to the murder of Leonard. What the fuck? Oh. I was like, "How do you not mention us being beaten with fucking a sword?" Party foul yeah. over here. Sorry, yeah. I said we would, we never do yeah, this. That's why I didn't want to do it. Eight ounce box of shame. <laughs> So, so my Sorry. final paragraph, <laughs> leading up... out of a bucket that you pissed in. <laughs> le- leading up to the death of Leonard, our favorite Paul character. All right, so Hel- <laughs> Helen thinks Leonard, again, not Paul, but Leonard, <laughs> Whatever, is just dude. the bee's knees and really insists on helping him. So Margaret, being Schneegel's sister, decides Helen is right. So Helen and... En- Helen ends up banging Leonard on a boat in a really romantic scene, except he's cheating on his fat wife, and, and Helen becomes pregnant. But her, hang on, her and Leonard drift apart, and later Helen is just chilling with her sister and Hopkins at Howard's end, and Leonard shows up because it's important to the plot in the movie, and Charles, who is Hopkins' son, but hasn't been in the film much, as TJ or as Angus alluded to, <laughs> Sorry. he starts you're not, beating. Now you're he getting starts us beating. Mixed up. We're not characters in your damn he's... movie. You need to keep us straight, buddy. <laughs> he starts beating Leonard with like the flat end of a sword. Yes, and that's because, what Wiki says. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, yeah. And, and then because Leonard is has a heart condition, he flails about like a woman and grabs onto a bookshelf, and the bookshelf falls on him and dies. <laughs> when Charles goes to prison. Anthony Hopkins becomes, like, a really nice guy because Schlegel left him, but then she came back because he was nice. <laughs> and then he writes a new will where Schlegel gets Howard's end, and that's the end of my film. Wait, so who got it? Schlegel. Uh, eventually, it, sh- the, the hot Schlegel sister. And then when, when if the Schlegel the sister other? dies, uh, the uh, one that Han- Hopkins was going to marry, um, um, the hot redhead. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And that's it. That is uh, that is Howard's right. end. Sweet. All right. So the movie I did was Blow Up from 1966, directed by Michelangelo. Wow. Like <laughs> the turtle? Yeah. Antonioni. So was this like a first role? Like it's so long ago. He was still a teenager. Uh, Wait, who? So it opens up with... Um, <laughs> Wait, are you saying Michelangelo? I got that's it. Pretty I good. got it. Swinging 60s music. That, that's nice. Uh, and we're now... Yeah, way did, better than my song. Did it go yet. like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to constantly have silk stockings no. for the show. But, uh... <laughs> But it did start with a vehicle. It it was started with a jeep driving through the city full of party mimes, and all right. they're all they're not being quiet at all. And then they stop the jeep and they get out. So now we have party mimes in the streets, and they run past some nuns and the party mimes like harass the nuns for a second. And what the fuck is this called? Blow up. Blow Not up. blow out with John Travolta, which I kept calling it, but it's blow <laughs> up. All right, I was gonna look it up, but then I realized I would probably just spoil it, so oh never mind. Yeah. God, stop it! I would slap. I'm not, motherfucker! I, I just said I'm not. 
Um, so we meet our main guy. He's a fashion cameraman, and he looks kind of like James Spader. And oh, I like James. Wait, handsome or ugly? Handsome. Which like version? shaggy blonde oh, okay. hair. Like yeah. Stargate James Spader. Cool. Uh, he's in this awkward photo shoot with a woman who's way too thin. Uh, apparently she's the, the person I noted from the credits, Varushka. <laughs> That's in her name. <laughs> Hold on, can uh, I just say something real quick? Yeah. On YouTube, yeah. I just searched blow up and it comes up with Stop! blow up official trailer. And then number two is I want to blow up China. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blow up China because then like the virus will get in the oh, air. Oh, yeah. Angus has coronavirus already. Listen to him hacking and coughing all episode. Yeah. I was fucking eating oh, he's bats. Good. He's been pretty good. Did you guys hear about that? Like, that's how it started, was these motherfuckers in China were yeah. eating bats? Yeah, like weird <laughs> yeah, market saw, food. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I saw they were, they were, they were like, they had owls and wolves and shit. Like, for sale. <laughs> but it was from bats, not koalas? What I read was bats. Oh, they yeah, whatever I said. Eating yeah. bats. <laughs> eating bats. Okay, like, they had, like, virus. bat soup. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese equivalent of tequila shit. Just Invent a new influenza <laughs> and die. Uh. <laughs> Jackie Chan's um, revenge. <laughs> so the, I don't even think he's Chinese. She contorts, and um, he's right now he's dressed like a bum because he did a photo shoot. We first see him leaving a photo shoot, I guess, at some like homeless shelter. So he's dressed like a bum, and he even has a pee stain on his crotch. Uh, and then he cleans up and he, he burns those clothes. And he, he tells an assistant, get the birds down, will you? And by birds, he means more models. So he has a another photo shoot. And then James Spader goes to a friend's house. His friend is a painter. <laughs> and he has a little a chat with his friend. And then he has a he sits down, he gets a beer, and then the painter's chick comes, and it, I guess she's, like, shared between him and James Spader. Um, and the chick gives him a scalp massage. But then he leaves. He doesn't finish the beer or the scalp massage. And I was I was like, this is probably my favorite part of the movie. Was he just sitting, getting a nice scalp yeah, massage. Yeah, I, I would finish the scalp massage. A beer. Yeah, those are nice. <laughs> How do you finish a scalp massage? Well, you finish the yeah, beer and then you're like, okay, this is good. Right? But like, he's like... Does your mm. scalp blow a load? Like, how do you know when you're done? <laughs> <laughs> your hair When you start out. bleeding. Yeah, yeah, when you start bleeding. You're like, okay, we're good. Thank you. That was delicious. <laughs> uh, so he goes back to work at, at his studio. And outside of his work... Uh, these girls are like wanting him to photograph them and he just insults them a bunch and tells one of them, get rid of that bag. It's diabolical. But he has like a, a snarky British accent, so it's better when he says it. And then he goes for a drive and he's wearing a nice suede coat. So he, he's got some nice clothes and he, he got half a scalp massage. He's like, like living a fairly good life. <laughs> uh, he goes to an antique shop. And the guy won't sell him anything. He just keeps saying, not for sale, not for sale, not for sale. Like, because he's Jewish or something? Like, no, why? he just why? says no. And he's like, okay, fine. So he goes to a park that's nearby. And he starts taking pictures of pigeons. And then he frolics up some Mike stairs. Tyson beats him up. <laughs> what? Mike Tyson, like, raises pigeons. <laughs> and doesn't let people photograph them? No, he beats the shit out of them if they take pictures of his pigeons. Oh, he's like a ghost dog. <laughs> oh. So, now he's frolics up some stairs, and now he's up near a field, and he starts secretly photographing a couple who are, are further away, and then the, the woman is Jolie Richardson's mom, and she notices, so she comes over to her and <laughs> yells at him. Okay. And she wants the... Uh, what, is he doing, like, upskirts? <laughs> let me see what you got no she's like just with some guy and then like the, they go towards a bush and the guy goes around the bush and then Jolie Richardson's mom comes up to him and starts <laughs> fighting him for the film and she even bites his hand trying to get the camera away from him and then he says what's the rush and because she can't get the film uh, she rush. runs off <laughs> <laughs> and so he goes back to the antique shop and now 
the owner is there, and it's this young girl. And they have a little chat, and he ends up buying a big wooden propeller. And does he have a boat? Or? No, like an airplane propeller. Does he have an airplane? No, I, I guess he gets it <laughs> as like a either an art piece or maybe something to go with his photography. And he buys it for like eight dollars too. I was like. That's Damn. a lot back then. Wait, did it, wait, hang on. Did this movie come out yesterday or like 1966? $8. It was, was like 250 like bucks back then. I looked it up because yeah. I was like, "Damn, that's Heat. cheap." Wait, wait, really? Uh, well, like that's eight pounds or something. I don't know. I, I think it was on. The, I don't know if it was in the trivia, so maybe they had their own extra inflation. See, I figured like eight bucks would get you the fucking plane back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this was like a hundred years ago. Uh, so, he's actually trying to buy the whole shop. Uh, and that's a subplot that kind of goes nowhere. Uh, now he uh, he meets his, a friend at a cafe, and he's working on a photography book with him. Uh, that was part of why he was with like the homeless people. You see a bunch of pictures of the homeless people he was working with. And Yuck. Then he ends up <laughs> going back to work. <laughs> and Jolie Richardson's mom shows up at his work. And then there's, like, weird pits of, like, hair on the film. But, like, in a way that it's, like, this is a deliberate thing. Uh, so What do you mean? From the obscure shots? Or, like, what's going on? What? Yeah, what do you mean oh, by that? You it both talked deliberate. at the same time. Why is there hair everywhere? Well, yeah, yeah, we both said so, the same thing. Well, a part of the, the theme of the movie is kind of like questioning reality and your place in it and also the like the voyeurism of watching movies oh yeah nice. this movie See, I, is very well known it, for artsy shit like that i figured it was like those things where like in space movies they would just scratch the film and it looked like lasers <laughs> yeah, he wanted but they to just look did hair house. <laughs> <laughs> he, he like dragged it around behind his car for a while so he could that grind house look <laughs> So, Jolie Richardson's mom shows up. She and James Spader chat. <laughs> Stop <laughs> saying that. I don't like that. it. <laughs> they listen to some jams. And, you know, she she wants... <laughs> what kind of jams? Film. 60s jams. Uh, see, I was just imagining the A-Team theme song. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Cowboy <laughs> Bebop theme song. <laughs> Let's jam. <laughs> he, um... There's he get, there's lots of smoking in this movie because it's 1966. He tells her to smoke slowly against the beat, so she does. And I, I like tried imagining that, and I just didn't understand the appeal at all. Um. So then Jolie Richardson's mom <laughs> tries to steal the camera, but he just magics himself into her way, like. She grabs the camera and she runs downstairs and she opens the door to get out and he's there already. So they end up going back upstairs and then she's going to try to like bang him to get the film. So Jolie Richardson's mom takes off her shirt, but like her boobs are concealed Ooh. by feathers. So don't get excited. Oh, and then I guess damn. maybe because they were concealed, he just says nah. And he, he, he does <laughs> Wait, some more magic. What do you mean? By feathers, like oh, like, like it's like so, a bra or like that. No, they're like fucking like, taped he's, on. Because he's a photographer, he has like outfits and like stuff. Oh, okay, everywhere. so it's like a, it's an outfit. And so the, it's like, yeah, she's behind like racks of clothing and shit. So it's like artful direction concealing it or something, whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> he gives her a film canister, but not the one that she was looking for. And then he says, yeah, you know what? How about that sex? Uh, but the doorbell rings yeah. and it's the propeller getting delivered oh. from the antique store. And so she leaves. Damn, I didn't know it was that big. I thought it was like. Well, he tries he to take, take it home, home in his car and it doesn't work. So then he gets it delivered. Oh. And he develops those photos that she was trying to get from him. And he thinks he sees the person in a, in the bushes. So. He makes a blow-up of it. <laughs> Wait, so is this like three weeks later? Because that's how long it used to take to make pictures, I think. Right? It was no, he has his like, own dark room. He's not little... waiting on Walgreens to develop his room oh. for his film. <laughs> he has a dark room. <laughs> Fucking Robin Williams Dude, shows up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? 
fucking pisses me off about like when you would develop film there was they would decide which pictures were good enough to give you. Like if it was like, did they ever like like if you had blurry pictures, what? they just didn't fucking give them to you? No, I got all the bad no. ones. I was like, I was a kid and I took yeah. like my finger. Most of them. My finger was in ninety percent of the pictures I took as a kid. I got all my bad pictures. Yeah. No, they. I don't know if it was just because this is one thing, maybe because they it was like a rule of theirs. But like, I had an ex girlfriend who like took the. Sh- like the fucking disposable camera put it down her shirt and took a picture so it was like a blurry tit shot no, but they dude. never gave oh, me that, that picture yeah, you guy totally to one hour photoed it and just took it but uh, he could have made a second copy and gave it fucking to me <laughs> like, right, no. but the thing is you know how no, they probably gotta that? like inventory all their materials so he, he couldn't make a copy he just took it but, <laughs> but they had the fucking thing at the end of it where it had, like, fucking all 24 pictures on the roll. Oh, yeah. And I could see her thing. blurry yeah, yeah, yeah. tit on the one, but I never got that actual photo. <laughs> no, I did took it. I'd be so mad. But I you felt... should have went back, like, I need yes, this one, please. Yes, it showed the negative. I need to speak to the that's manager. My, that's my underage girlfriend's <laughs> yeah. boob. Thank you. She, she was overage. I was underage. So that's why I was, like, kind of oh. like, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, you go back and be like, "You're you got some pervy dude back there. He's stealing the tit pics. <laughs> Can I get my tit pic, please? <laughs> please have my tit pic. I need I need a duplicate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I could can put the two of them together like it was a pair. <laughs> oh, it was just one tit. Yeah, it was just one tit. <laughs> Who steals one tit? I don't know this motherfucker. Looks like that guy that hung out. Yeah, I think it's this guy. It's he had like a whole collection of just blurry single tits. I bet. <laughs> this is why fucking Eckerd went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> they were stealing tit pics. Oh, that's what you get for going to Eckerd. What the fuck? <laughs> dude, apparently, like when I worked at the Target in St. Pete, the dude who like ran my store was the number one dude of Eckerd. <laughs> Like if you, what does that mean? If you like, Google like his name, like stealing tit pics, he, <laughs> he was the top of the Eckerd stealing tit pics. So wait, the of eighteen-year-old girls Eckerd, after he got out of jail for stealing pictures, <laughs> just became a store manager at Target. <laughs> yeah, that's a career I'm fail. Good. <laughs> just some shitty store in fucking Saint Pete. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking the head of Eckerd. Went down. Oh man, I that. bet you that guy runs the HOA too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so now James Spader makes lots of blow ups and he sees a gun in the bushes and he suspects <coughs> foul play. And now the uh, two girls he rejected earlier and made fun of their purses, I call them the giggle girls because they keep giggling. So the giggle girls show now, What happened up. to that really skinny girl? Or whatever. Uh, she was just a model. He did a photo shoot. She's gone. That was Varushka, <laughs> by the way. Don't forget Varushka. Uh, but now okay, you can forget her, her because she's not coming back. I was going to say, you just oh. said she's not coming back. Why would I give a shit? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look her uh, up later. He tells the giggle girls to make some coffee. And, and they giggle. I get uh, it. He goes to the phone and they start trying on clothes. And, and then he, he, he acts like he's going to rape them. And like... He gets one on her own. The one who said she didn't want to have sex. I got you, bitch. Yeah. And and it gets really tense. And then him and the girls wrestle and fight all over his studio. And then it turns into, like, naked wrestling. But, like, as a euphemism That's called rape. (laughs) But it it, it, it goes away from being rape. And then, like, they team up on him and, like, take his shoes off and stuff. But, like, they Hell rip yeah. off each other's clothes in the midst of these, like, pastel uh, paper backdrops. So, you know, like, the, the photographers have the backdrops they pull down. It's a paper just to have the color in the back. They rip one of those down, this, like, lavender one, and they just wrestle and rip each other's clothes off in that. I'm just imagining um, it's, like, those Sears portrait photos, but <laughs> these women <laughs> fighting behind it or in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> um okay and then it, it cuts and uh they help him get his shoes back on and uh then they roll up their stockings and get into a car 
There's silk stockings. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it ain't, it ain't, oh, it's... fuck, I closed out the song. TJ's going to edit it all into it into it appropriately. I know. <laughs> I have faith in it. Uh, that's not actually what happens. They leave, and uh, he goes back up uh, to stare at his photos. And now he's in his living room with pictures of Jolie Richardson's mom. <laughs> 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 Honestly, from this, it just sounds like creepy clown music from 1972. Yeah, for me, it sounds like, I'm sure it'll sound good for our listeners, but for me, it just sounds like, That's yeah, exactly like what it was! Yeah. yeah. No, TV, no, you fucking exactly nailed it, it dude! Like. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Dude, what if this is what we get booted from fucking iTunes for? Oh, we're gonna get a <laughs> ban for use of copyrighted material. We play the Silk Stockings thing too much. <laughs> um, okay, so now we have all these pictures of Jolie's Richardson's mom surrounding him. Um, and then he... He sees a body in one of the, the bushes, but it's all blurry. So he goes to the park at night to look for the body, and it's there! And then he runs back to the studio and his propeller. Uh, and then he just ends up leaving there to go to the painter's house. And then the painter and the scalp, uh, scalp massage girl are having sex. And James Spader and the scalp massage girl make eye contact. And they just have a, have a melancholy look. And Mike, you're going to love this, some jazz piano plays. All right. And he goes back to the studio, and the photos are gone. And now the scalp massage girl shows up at his studio, and they talk. I know this is going to sound stupid, but where the hell is Vanessa Musgrave again in this? Is she gone? She's, She's dead, Jolie dog. Richardson's mom. Oh. No, I know who she is. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she appeared she for that scene. Where she tried to steal the film, and then she, she as an actual person, is no longer in the, the movie. You just see her pictures after oh. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So sort of like yours, where she just dies. Um, cool. Oh, wait, that was Mike's but, movie where she died? What? Did she die? What? She did yeah, not die Yeah, my movie, mine. she died. She's not dead oh, okay. Mine. See, but I thought she, she died in your back. movie, too. I was like, yeah, she lived she forever in our she hearts. Died. Yeah, she is dead now. She dies in Mission Impossible, too. Wait, is um, she really dead in real life? Is that how she died? In Mission Impossible? Filming the movie? Uh, no, she just faded away. That's how she died. <laughs> she fell out of the plane uh, like during that scene with Tom Cruise. <laughs> 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 she became an international terrorist. Like, I want Tom Cruise to come after me. I'm gone. So they talk about the murder, and the scalp girl says, I wonder why they shot him. And James Spader says, I didn't ask. And she leaves. And so James Spader goes to fetch his buddy Ron. And he sees Jolie Richardson's mom in the street. And he follows her to a rock and roll show. And he can't find her at all. But he watches the Yardbirds play. And... Is that a real band? Yeah, it was uh, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page... From Led Zeppelin, and I forget the other it was guy. Beck and Jimmy Page. I'm glad you said that because I was like, man, that loser guy has been around for a <laughs> while. Eric Clapton. <laughs> Eric Clapton's the other dude. So it's like the band that got them all their start. That's. Oh, I was gonna say that's a fucking famous band. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that makes uh, sense. And, yeah. um, Jeff Beck destroys a guitar and throws it into the crowd, and they go crazy. I put it in all caps, so I felt I had to yell it. Uh, James Eric Spader Clapton runs throws off. his dead child into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he has a dead kid. I don't. Isn't isn't he the one who had the kid who fell out of a fucking window? Yeah, then he made uh, a cool song about it. So thank <laughs> God he died. I like that. <laughs> thank song. God that child died. We I got like a good song out of it. Is one of us making a joke and at least one of us not getting it, and we have to stop <laughs> and explain. <laughs> But well, I'm one sure day we're going to join the don't... 21st century and get like HD microphones implanted into our noses or however. But we still other won't do it. get each other's pop culture references because oh, we're all yeah, just that's... we all just oh, yeah. found our niches and we don't know anything else outside <laughs> of our niches, even really big relevant pop culture stuff. And we're just 
each of us has a huge blind spot. <laughs> Tears in heaven. Um, Yours is anything after 1968. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty bad about that. Uh, so James Spader runs out of the club with the neck of the guitar and then just throws it in the street. And he ends up at this high-class cocktail party. Party? Harder. I can't even talk anymore. I haven't even. Came drank. a '90s rapper. I'm just so excited to be back on the show. It's all it's all that blackberry juice. And <laughs> oh, that's right. He's not even drinking. There's a bunch of stoners there, and then he meets his buddy Ron, who's smoking two joints at once, and he won't talk to. Sounds James like Spader. you've been smoking two joints at once during this parter. <laughs> so Jay Spader drags Ron away, and then starts talking about murder, but Ron is too high and so next we cut to james spader waking up surrounded by whiskey bottles and he goes to the park it's daytime now the corpse is gone and then the party mimes show up in their jeep and they they rush out of their jeep and go to a tennis court so are these real like mimes or they're like yeah they're like french bohemian party mimes like (laughs) They have the face of mimes, party mime means. and they're wearing striped shirts, but they have, like, they just look like they're ready to party, man. And they run around excited and yelling wearing? and laughing and stuff. Well, mimes don't yell. They, they're well, I know. That's part of the art of it. The contradiction, the juxtaposition, the conflict. I hope they got murdered for this bullshit by, like, the mime mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine a fucking mime that's dressed up like Al Pacino and just fucking cutting a motherfucker. Uh, so Dude, I'm just the imagine mime... they do like the, the finger gun and then just boo and then he just does like... The... Oh my god, yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's all it takes. It can no longer be mimes after Something that. Something like, like that oh, happens in mom. the movie minus the killing. The The mimes go to oh. a, the tennis court and they mime playing tennis and the camera tracks the invisible ball which eventually goes over the fence and so they, they kind of ask for james spader to throw their mind ball back and so he does and then we just see his face and then you start hearing tennis sounds and we zoom out from him just standing wait female or male what because women make those cool noises uh, when they no they're the not ball. making sounds they have a. They were miming <laughs> doing it, so oh. it wasn't really a ball. But you, was, you hear the rackets and the ball hitting. I was imagining like a. Uh, <coughs> no, the mimes uh, don't start making. Uh, those are my favorite. That's why I watch ESPN um, too. Dude, it anyway. rules. So, <laughs> like I so love we those see sounds James so Spader <laughs> standing in a field, and then he just slowly. Listening to the mime. Oh. He slowly fades out while the field remains, and that's the end of Blow Up. Oh. Yeah. I didn't expect that then so soon. No. Huh. Huh. That's it. All right, so uh, we got some selling, selling points. points to go through. Yeah, so it's time for our best bullet points. Angus, what do you got? I gave away my best one about the bottoms versus bottoms, so I don't uh, know. Yeah. Oh, my God, you fucked up, <laughs> so that's acceptable. That that's but it, it was so funny in the moment. Like, it, that was, yeah, I don't know. All right. I don't know. That's cool. I I accept that yeah, as a selling that, that's, point. That's, that's mine. Great. Yeah. So uh, I I didn't give mine away because there is none. I wrote there is no selling point. What about that sword that shit? A... That was pretty sweet. I <laughs> was pretty wacky. Yeah, but Angus googled <laughs> it and spoiled it anyway. <laughs> I was still excited about it. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I'm not. I'm glad. I'm glad TJ's ire is directed not at me. Finally, I'm so happy it, you did that. Actually, it's still <laughs> uh-huh. literally the only thing I, I remember. Wrote that, uh, movie. This is the best film ever made about early century England about mostly rich people, and it's beautiful to look at. And there's like dozens of cool set pieces, and the music changes like every fucking scene, like it's a JRPG. And, and no one else is going like this. this. No one else is going to watch this or like this except me. So that's my selling point. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> said, Does the music sound like this? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, it's, I don't know. I mean, that's my selling point. That's how I felt about it. So, TJ, let's go to your mind, um, like. Wait, what did I write down? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, that propeller was pretty cool. I think Mike would appreciate seeing I was the hoping propeller. you'd tell us your selling point <laughs> in <action>? mind. <laughs> On a podcast. Um, but my real selling point 
is that the James Spader guy is actually David Hemmings from Deep Red. Oh. And Wait, that's it all wasn't got, really James had... Spader? No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it was like... David Hemmings. And he's got a lot of funny little lines. Like, he's like got the like British sarcasm going on through the movie. He's, he's really fun to watch. I got to cool. see Deep Red a couple months ago with Goblin performing it live. Like, oh, the soundtrack yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, you keep sending pictures of that. I keep going, man, that looks awesome. <laughs> I, I don't keep sending pictures. I sent the one <laughs> the night of. Twice. It, it's, happened, <laughs> it's happened twice. No, I, I, I didn't mean it negatively. <laughs> this is Goblin. It's good morning, Goblin time. <laughs> I think I'd be okay with it for like five days, and then I'd be like, "Bro, I literally sent one." Like we get it, you live in the top ten metropolitan regions in America, but stop rubbing in her uh, faces. I'm just gonna Google pictures of them and give you a goblin good morning every day. (laughs) Goblin morning. (laughs) Give me a raspberry. Yeah, Hank is gonna give you belly kisses, and I'll give you goblin mornings. Goblin He'll give you belly is kisses to Bobby goblin freezy. music. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Or he'll give you belly kisses to the theme from Silk Stockings. <laughs> <laughs> That's too sexy. You'll fucking have a scalp cum. <laughs> <laughs> that movie made me want a scalp massage. I gotta, I gotta say that. Like, I've been thinking about it all week. Dude, I, I don't you're like... Just, you massage. gotta fuck it up and scalp some people on accident. I, mean, I don't want to give a prison. scalp massage. I want to receive a scalp... Like a long finger nailed scalp oh. massage. That just sounds gross to me, man. Like, I don't we know. We should go to a spa together. Know. We should have a half a spa. <laughs> just say, could I get a long finger nailed scalp massage and a beer, please? Yeah. Yeah, they have those, totally. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you'd get a yeah, salt we could put cucumbers on her eyes and everything. I don't like the cucumbers. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, we have another segment. Uh, so Maybe. now it's time for us to bring it to the event horizon, where we relate all of our movies to Paul W. S. Anderson's 1997 classic, Event Horizon, in a segment we call the Horizon Shift. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, I'll go. Um, yeah. So basically, you know how like everybody in like on like in Event Horizon, like they have like their own like little experience of hell where they're imagining it. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Big part of the film. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and big part of the film. So my movie relates to that in that the little kid Zachary is living oh. hell every day having to live with two gay parents. <laughs> According to Virginia law, he is. <laughs> According to God's law, he you, is. You, you juked me, Angus. I didn't see that coming. I've been juked. Oh, that was... Whew, that was a crossover there. <laughs> he's, right. he's on the event horizon and he, he like sees <laughs> apparitions of two women kissing. That's his hell. All right, so I guess I have one too. <clears throat> so bear with me. So the 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 poor original crew of the event horizon are all dead. Exactly how the poor bass are dead to the world. For people like uh, Anthony Hopkins here in this movie, the Event Horizon crew are poor because they're fucking dead and in hell, which presumably (laughs) sucks. And the Basts are poor because, well, you know, they're poor and being poor sucks. And they die too. Except maybe not Bast's wife. I actually don't remember what the hell happened to her. So all the Basts died? There was only two of them, and one died and one disappeared, so I'm going to say yes. Oh, and so the the connection between future Event Horizon and England circa 1903 is it's fucked to be poor. And that's my horizon shift. TJ? Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> Fuck you, I tried. 
Oh, yeah. yeah I you, liked it, dude. You put more heart into mine. I was, like, looking up and down on mine. I was like, yeah, well, you know, the movie kind of, like, is about blending reality and perception. I was like, it's not quite there to Event Horizon. Um, what I settled on is that I could totally see that, like, weird scene where they had, like, the fight wrestle sex as the precursor yeah. to the orgy scene. So, like, that's how it started. It was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> are you... Are you raping me or not? Oh, this is going to be fun. And the next thing you know, it's just like ripping out the anuses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but this is how it began. Like the first hour and a oh, half of a, it. That's a rough one. It was one. just like fun rustling and tumbling. And then it just got more and more and more <laughs> aggressive until like the inside started coming out sexually. Yeah, no, I got it the first time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So that that's that's it. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. That's that's one of your best. All right, thank you. And uh, now we're yeah, gonna Angus is vote really added for a winning movie. Angus. Uh, okay, I I gotta say with that Horizon shift, TJ, oh, you just dude. took it. That's the fucking funniest thing Woo-hoo! I've heard for a Horizon shift ever. So, yeah. yeah. Rape anuses is hard to beat. That's funny, dude. Um, <laughs> um, oh, shit. This is, this is really hard. Because on the one hand, we get mimes that are probably pretty cool. And I like the 60s movies. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, whatever Angus said about his movies. <laughs> <is cool>. That's <laughs> what <he> said. <laughs> The, the prog... I have a short-term memory problem, so I actually forgot what I was going to say about Angus. There's lesbians, um, child abuse. <laughs> no, okay, the uh, the lesbian, you know, kiss in the uh, in the rain yeah. is cool. And I really don't want to watch another 60s movie because I've been kind of <laughs> on a 60s thing for a while. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm really going to have to go with Angus and the cool chick with the Hawaiian shirt. Okay. <laughs> it is female I'm, you. I'm, I'm totally in that. Which I love. Yeah, the mimes and the anuses couldn't overcome the Hawaiian shirt and, and, the, and, the, and just everything. Keith, Keith seemed like a cool guy, you know? Keith ruled, like dude. Keith. Yeah. Um... So yeah, unfortunately, uh, I have to pick Angus. Don't say unfortunately, uh, dickhead. I don't. Yeah. Well, because I, I was I was giving it I was giving the microphone to TJ, so it was like I was talking. Okay. You know, I had to say yeah, that, I'm here. You know? Fuck yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So since the whole time Mike was talking there, I was imagining oh, a trailer cut of like a '70s grindhouse trailer cut of Angus's movie as an exploitation <laughs> movie. <laughs> I have to go with Angus's movie just, like, as viewing it from that angle. Like, imagine it's from, like, 1974, and it's just totally about the debauched lives of these two lesbians. (laughs) And the law comes against them. And, like, it's just full of sex and child abuse and kissing in the rain. Dude's uh, name Keith. Yeah, You're really dude. weird without alcohol, Dude's man. Your Keith fucking bubbly water is getting you wild. Blow smoke in babies' faces. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that scene is so like fucked up. When I like was watching it, I was like, "Dude, how are they not like say, showing that that's bad?" <laughs> like, like yeah, that's even... this whole like just unapologetic look. It just yeah, it's this it sounds like awful movie for 1996. Like, but. The, the funny thing is, like I said, this won the GLAAD Award, so like the gays are like, this is the greatest movie for us of the year, this proves that we're good people, but she was being an well, awful we're doing fucking episode, person. We're, uh, like, I, I, we're googling gay 1996 films. Right, where they, I or mean, whatever. it was 1996, they're actually probably really bad, like Boat Trip and shit like that. Like, <laughs> I think Boat Trip was more positive than blowing smoke in no, a baby's know, face after I'm punching saying, it. Like, well, I... From what you, the way you told the movie, Boat Trip sounds more like sensitive to is, that's what I'm saying. than your movie did. <laughs> My movie made them seem kind of fucking evil. <laughs> well, I mean, looking at the Wikipedia, that doesn't make them seem evil, but it seems like the people involved in this were all like just white trash gutter people. And the only thing that really stands out is that this judge, instead of saying you're just white trash gutter people, he had to say, oh, you can't do it because you're a people? lesbian. 
Yeah, what, what well, I do no, want to say is like, the, the one real their two lesbian. Faces and... Maggie was okay though. Yeah, right. Maggie wasn't a bad person. But yeah, I'm calling her a gutter person because she beat her kid. No, no, no. Maggie didn't do anything bad. I, it was no, Jody I, that was beating the kid. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 verdict was against Jody or whatever her name was. And yeah, Mrs. But I'm Bottoms saying, like, in real life. The the legit gay person was actually the was an okay person. Right, and it sounds like the movie doesn't want to highlight that at all. Yeah. Like so. <laughs> That's so I don't know. You're I'm saying just... Maggie should have killed all the people and took the baby. Like, <laughs> it's just a fucking lesbian rampage. That would have yeah. been a cool movie, too. Yeah, I would have liked that. From 1976. <laughs> oh, shit. The law yeah, I didn't expect to win this. Let her keep her baby. And now she's mad. <laughs> she's mad as hell. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> yeah, it would be just be called Maggie Maggie Monday or something like that. Uh, oh my god! All right, so that's our cinema. I mean, wait, what? That's our, that's our movie. That's it. That yeah, it? no, we're done. Uh, Angus, do you have next? a theme for next episode, or do you need a twenty-four yeah. hour thinking? No, movie? no, I can, I can do it. I have a couple I've been fucking with. Um, this one I think is gonna be weird. Um, I'm thinking we weird. should do. But I'm thinking we should do a family-friendly episode. So, um, PG-rated tween movie. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I'll just watch Funky Monkey again. No, 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 no. no. You can watch watch Russell Madness. (laughs) We just watch the same fucking (laughs) animal movies. Like, yeah. Well, no, because fucking Mike ruined that with his fucking Alice yeah, Cooper dog movie. So with a dubbed Alice Cooper oh. movie. <laughs> Fuck off. All right, yeah, that that that's my theme. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks for listening. Like us. Subscribe. Review. Comment. Wherever you're listening to us. Follow. Do all that shit. See ya. <laughs> This was the least energetic outro ever. It's because I just took the reins. I should have just let you do it. I was, yeah, I usually. I, I forgot how to do this. Should I do it now? Yeah, hey, I, everybody! Let's, try again. You should, let's, let's start this over. Is Mike even still here? Let's make Mike do it. Mike, oh, he stopped recording? He stopped recording. Oh, well, then I'm, I'm out. Bye. Peace. So I hope you guys are fucking ready for this energy. Sex and child abuse and kissing in the rain. Who steals one tit?